Hey everyone, my name is Kendrick Coleman, and today I'm here to introduce you to the Monster Remote. Now, the Monster Remote is an application that I developed to be a remote control for a Monster Shield prop controller. So, being able to use any smartphone capable device such as an iPhone or Android, anything that has web browsing capabilities, whether it's a tablet or even a computer, you can actually use to be able to remotely set off or trigger anything that's animated for the monster shield whether it can be in a yard haunt a haunted house uh, a light show um, amongst the different other things but let's go ahead take a look at the setup and we'll take a deeper dive into the application so here's the setup we have looking at over here first we'll take a look at the monster shield now the monster shield is the prop controller and, and as you can see in between there I actually have the expander board and the Arduino on the bottom and on the outside we have four different banks of relays so we have a total of 16 different relays uh, the monster shield is already configured for all of its animation so it's pretty much ready to go at this point we've got the mp3 module in there to have cd quality sound uh, mine's also been a little bit uh, modified for power resources as you can see we've got a little bit of adapter coming from that particular um, output right there um, but that's just for my purposes but for now let's just focus on the, the setup so we have this ready to go, but how are we getting power to it, or how are we able to send commands to it? Well, as we can see over here, we actually have a Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is actually what's responsible for running the program that's actually communicating down into the Arduino itself to send those commands. So from the Raspberry Pi on the back side of here, we actually have a high gain USB antenna, so any wireless dongle will work. So from this Raspberry Pi, we actually have the Rails program that's running on here. Um, so the Monster Remote is actually Ruby on Rails program. So this actually functions as the server or the Rails server uh, to actually run the program. So from here, from the Raspberry Pi, we have a USB outlet going to the wireless dongle. We actually have another USB going into the powered USB hub. Um, the powered USB hub is necessary to actually give the Arduino enough uh, ample power draw to be able to power everything uh, that's going on with the Monster Shield, um, as we can see. So as, as you can probably guess from the USB hub, that actually connects into the um, port right down there at the bottom of the Arduino. So that's the setup. Now when we take a look at this application, go ahead and load it up on my screen. We can see that we have all of the animations ready to go on here. Um, but I'll go ahead and just kind of give you a little bit of look around inside of the application first. Um, these are all the animations that I have selected. So as we can see, if we actually go into our settings page right here, if I go to the Monster Shield settings, and go ahead and shrink that down. Uh, because one of the good things here is that since this is a responsive Ruby on Rails application, I can actually use it um, on my smartphone, I can use it on the computer, um, it'll just resize for what application I'm actually looking at. Um, so within here, I can actually go through a, a single animation, I can click on the edit side, um, and I can name it anything I want. I can also enable or disable um, the particular scene, and that will actually remove the button from my home screen. So if I go ahead and I actually disable that, I can click update scene. Now when I do this, um, and I update it, it's actually going to completely uh, remove it from uh, the monster shield itself. So as we can see, it's now enabled at false. So if we go to the uh, monster remote homepage, whoops, let me go ahead and the back button, I'm sorry. So when we go to this, uh, go here, um, we can see that now it's at a false state. Now I can go ahead and go back to the main page here, and we can see that it's no longer there. So we can see number two has been gone. Now I can also turn on and turn off the ambient settings uh, through the Monster Shield side as well. Go ahead and readjust my camera here. And when I scroll down, I can go ahead and click Start. When I click Start, we can see that, oops, oh, there we go. I actually have a um, thing on here, a warning sign that says it's going to start it. So we'll go ahead and click OK. Click OK, as we can see, there it begins to go. Um, it's going in ambient mode. Now at the same time, I can go back to the Monster Remote homepage and I can set off anything I want. So we can set off the girl screen, and there you can so you can see that goes off. If I turn the sound up a little bit, you can probably hear it. So there you go. That's a quick look at the Monster Remote, what it's capable of. If I go into the 
Monster Shield settings. Um, I can actually go, oops, I'm sorry, go into the Monster Shield settings here. Um, I can go and I can actually stop the ambient mode from running. Go ahead and click OK to turn it off. As you can see, it goes ahead and turns off. And then I can also come into the edit side in here, go ahead and enable this scene again. Clip update scene. We can see that it's running at the very top. And once I get done with that, I can go back to the home page and um, up and running again. So that's a quick look at the Monster Remote. Um, go ahead and you can actually download it at my GitHub repository at uh, github slash ka cold 2 slash monster underscore remote. Or you can actually be able to see um, how to install this, how to look at the change log for the code at my site kendrickcoleman.com and here's an entire tutorial on how to run it and install it and be able to uh, put it on your own Raspberry Pi and be able to use it for your own haunt.